After watching this video, you should be able to describe how heart valve lesions affects the Wigger's diagrams, particularly the pressure versus time. Let's review murmurs again, looking at timing. And remember that for the valvular lesions, there's two major categories. There's the stenosis, where we hear the turbulent blood flow, that murmur when the valve is open. And for the systolic type, the only valve that's open is the semilunar valve during ejection, and so we have our aortic or pulmonic valve stenosis. For the diastolic murmurs, we hear those during filling. That's the only time during diastole where we have a valve open. In this case, it's the AV valve. And we have mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis. And remember, stenosis murmurs we hear when there's forward flow across an open valve. For the regurgitation type, we hear the murmur when there's backward flow across a valve that's not closed properly. And in this case, we have the mitral and tricuspid regurgitation, which is heard throughout systole. IVC, ejection, and IVR, those isovolumetric phases aren't isovolumetric anymore because there's backward flow from the ventricle to the atria. For the regurgitation type in diastole, we have aortic and pulmonic regurgitation, and those murmurs are heard throughout diastole, and we again lose our isovolumetric phases as volume increases in the ventricle from backward flow from the great artery to the ventricle. Just want to point out one other thing that even though these murmurs are under the systolic and diastolic categories, mitral and tricuspid regurgitation are heard throughout most of systole and can even go into diastole, that pseudo isovolumetric relaxation. And for the diastolic regurgitation, aortic and pulmonic regurgitation, we hear those most of diastole and they can trickle into systole in that pseudo-IVC phase. When you look at the Wiggers again, it's good to review the valvular events. Here we're just looking at the left side, but it's, it still applies, the principles apply to the right. The onset of ventricular contraction causes the mitral valve or tricuspid valve to close. The pressure rises during IVC until we open the semilunar. We have the ejection phase, then we have the IVR, and filling. And remember, in between S1 and S2, that's systole. In between S2 and S1, that's diastole. Now we're going to look at some different pressure versus time graphs for different types of murmurs. And what we have labeled here are the pressures in the different colors. We have ventricular pressure in magenta. We have atrial pressure in turquoise. And this strawberry color for the great artery pressure. And we also have labeled the valvular closures S1 and S2. So if we look at the one on the upper left, we see that the abnormality here is that there's a very high atrial pressure and there's actually a gradient between the atrial pressure and the ventricular pressure. And that starts at the opening of the AV valve and continues until the AV valve closes. And remember, normally the pressure difference should be very small there. Now we see on this other one, there's a pressure gradient between the ventricle and the great artery during the ejection phase between when the semilunar valve opens and the semilunar valve closes. So those would be two types of murmurs where there's big time pressure gradients. Now if we look at the bottom left, we see that there's a very high V-wave pressure that is increasing rapidly during the time where the atria are supposed to be getting filled from the veins. So something else must be filling the atria to account for that very high pressure. And then over here we see that the abnormality over on the, the panel on the right, we see that the great artery pressure is dropping very dramatically. And that pressure is corresponding to a ventricle pressure that is also increasing more than normal. So if we put some labels on these, the one on the upper left is an AV valve stenosis, and that's because we hear the murmur during filling. We have a pressure gradient between the atria and the ventricle. The one on the, on the upper right is a semilunar valve stenosis because we can see that there's a big pressure gradient between the ventricle and the great artery. And the bottom left is an AV valve regurgitation because starting at the time of the AV valve closure, we see a big rise 
in the atrial pressure. And we see on the one on the lower right is a semilunar valve regurgitation because we're seeing that drop in great artery pressure as the blood is getting dumped back into the respective ventricle. I also want to point out that on the AV valve stenosis, we see that the wide descent is blunted because blood is having a hard time getting from the atria to the ventricle. And also keep in mind that when you have a stenosis, the pressures on either side of that valve are going to be very different. The pressure upstream of the valve is going to have a much higher pressure than it normally does. And that means that for the semilunar valve stenosis, the peak systolic great artery pressure is no longer a valid estimate of the peak ventricular pressure. Now let's put in our heart sounds and we're going to do this for the four possibilities S1, S2, S1 because we want to have the whole cardiac cycle represented and we'll just put a line to separate the right and left half so we don't get confused. And remember between S1 and S2 that's systole and between S2 and S1 that's diastole. So up here on this upper left we see that we have a murmur that's in diastole. It doesn't start right at the beginning of diastole, but there's a little bit of a delay. And then we see that the intensity falls and there's, there's a little increase right before S1. So this is going to be a diastolic murmur. And we don't hear the murmur during isovolumetric relaxation, but rather we hear it during filling. And that's the profile that we see. Over to the right, I'm going to put another the murmur here. And this one starts just a little bit after S1. It doesn't start right at S1. So this is a systolic murmur. We don't hear the murmur during IVC, but we do hear it during ejection. And it has this diamond-shaped or crescendo-decrescendo profile. So this murmur on the upper left matches our, our wiggers. It's the AV valve stenosis. And the murmur on the right matches also the wiggers we looked at as a semilunar valve stenosis. Now down here, we have a murmur that starts at S1 and continues all the way through and even goes past a little bit S2. And this is a systolic murmur that goes a little bit into diastole. And often the term holosystolic or pansystolic is used to describe this kind of murmur. See, it has sort of a pretty consistent intensity all the way through. Now finally, over on the lower right, we can put in another murmur here. This is going to start at S2 and go all the way, and it might even go a little bit past S1. So this is a diastolic murmur, and we can label these. The one on the left here is an AV valve regurgitation, which matches our wiggers, and the one on the lower right is a semilunar valve regurgitation. And these are just a visualization of the intensities of the murmur uh, going along with the timing and the pressure gradient profiles on the wiggers diagram. And if you saw these abnormal wiggers, have a sense of what the valve lesion is. And that concludes this video on effects of heart valve lesions on the wiggers diagram.